Hit it, hit it. gift to make for our children's teacher and have I got it for you. Today we're going to learn how to make these holiday mitten scrubbies. This is made out of the brand new Red Heart Scrubby yarn and it is perfect for that quick gift you need to make. It is super duper cool because look, you can actually put your hand in it and so you can use this for the bathtub, you can use it for your dishes, you can use it for anything you want. Couple it with a really pretty uh, soap, maybe a soft soap or something, and you have the perfect gift, something that's truly unique that you can make special for all of your kids' teachers. Because it comes in many colors. You don't have to choose red and white. You can have purple, you can have blue, you can have green, you can have pink, you can have yellow, you can have orange, anything you want, it's there for you. So let me show you what you need to get started, and then we'll jump in and we'll make this awesome mitten. The first thing you need to do is go download the pattern. It's a free pattern available over at redheart.com. I put the link down there in the video notes, that way you don't have to go searching for it. Then you're going to grab two colors of scrubby yarn. You don't really want to use the same color because you want to have a different color for the cuff and then a color for the body, for the hand. Um, but you can use any color you want. It's just one ball of each color. I'm going to have you get a couple stitch markers, a pair of knitting needles, a good sewing needle. So this is a tapestry needle with a bent tip and a large eye so you can thread the yarn through so you'll be able to sew the mittens close and a good pair of scissors. Grab your pattern, get your materials, join me back here and we'll get started on the cuff. All right, you have your pattern, let's go ahead and jump in. The first thing the pattern tells us to do is to cast on 30 stitches. So I'm going to do a knitted cast on for this. First thing you need to do is put a slip knot onto your needle and then we're gonna do the knitted cast on. For that, you're going to go in to the stitch that's on your needle, yarn over your right hand needle just as normal, pull that yarn over through, extend that stitch out, take your left hand needle, come around to the right side of that stitch and scoop it and put it on. Then you repeat that process. Go into the stitch, yarn over, come out the stitch, let's try that one more time. In, around, out, extend and you're going to swing around and put it on. You want to make sure that when you do this, you do not try and put this stitch on your needle just by scooping it like that from the left side. It doesn't look right. You always want to scoop around just like this to the right side. Okay? Let's get our 30 stitches cast on. I'll do this. I'll have it fade into when I have 30 stitches. I have my 30 stitches and it's time for me to follow the instructions and it says I'm going to work in garter stitch until this piece measures an inch and a half. So garter stitch is just knitting every row. So I'm going into each one of my stitches and I am just knitting it all the way down the row. So I go in the stitch, around the needle, out the stitch and off. In, around, out, off. In, around, out, off. As you're working with this yarn, the eyelash of the scrubby yarn is just kind of there to be that scrubby nature. So you are not going to work into the eyelash section. You want to make sure that you are working into the general base or the stitch itself that is around the needle. Um, the only reason I point that out is a couple times I have caught myself with uh, super pointy needles accidentally going into one of the eyelashes and treating it like it's a stitch. And you don't want to do that. So that's the biggest thing I would say. Be cautious of that as you're working with this yarn. Go ahead and knit on your cuff until it measures an inch and a half. And then join me back here and we'll get started on the hand of the mitten. You have your cuff complete and it's time to work the lower hand of the mitten. If you look down here, you can see I have my 30 stitches and I've done my inch and a half. And I've gone ahead and I've marked every tenth stitch just so that way it's easier for me as I'm showing you guys today. We're going to put a knit front and back in each one of these stitches. 
Because the next part of the instructions say that we're going to knit nine stitches, knit front and back, knit nine stitches, knit front and back, knit nine stitches, knit front and back. What we're doing when we do that is we're increasing this little section here. Because if you look at your hand, the anatomy of a hand, if your cuff is down here, you need to have a little bit extra right here on your hand, right, on the mitten. So that's what we're going to create right now. So we're going to create these increases, and then we're going to just knit for five rows. So let me show you how to do the increase. I've gone ahead and I've cut my uh, yarn that I was using for the cuff, leaving six inches, just so it's easier to weave in later. I'm going to take my new color, and I'm choosing blue because my mom has requested a blue and white knit. So that is what I'm doing. It will match her uh, holiday decor very well. Okay. So I've just tied my new color, my blue, onto the white. Okay. I've, I know you're not supposed to put knots in your knitting, but I'm giving you the okay to do that. It's just going to make this yarn butt up really close to that stitch and makes things just so much easier as you're working along. So go ahead and do that. And we're going to carry on doing the row as stated in the pattern. So we're going to knit nine stitches. So I'm going into the stitch and I'm just going to knit over to the stitch I have marked. Now you don't have to go ahead and mark your stitches. I just tend to talk as I'm doing my knitting like this. And so I wanted to make sure that I didn't have to pause and recount. I wanted to make sure I knew exactly when I was going to get to the stitch I needed to knit. So I'm here because here's my marked stitch. I'm going to go ahead and remove my marker. And then I'm going to do a knit front and back. Now here's how you do a knit front and back. We're going to go into the stitch just like normal. We're going to knit just like normal and come out. But now we're not going to have the white stitch jump off. We're going to extend our right hand needle, swivel it around, and go into the back leg of that same stitch. Can you see I'm in the back leg? And I'm going to knit again and bring the yarn back through the back leg, just like that. So now I have two stitches made out of one. So I've done an increase. And now I'm going to knit nine stitches. And conveniently enough, I have it marked yet again so that I can talk to you guys the whole time. I don't have to sit and count, right? As long as I don't drop a stitch, this will be a great plan. <laughs> All right, so we're over here to the marked stitch. And we're going to do that knit front and back one more time so that you can see how it works. I'm going to go into the stitch, yarn over, and come through. Extend my right hand needle just to extend that stitch a little bit. Swivel around. Take my right hand needle and stick it into the back leg of that same stitch. Yarn over, just like I'm doing another knit stitch. So now I have two stitches made out of one. Now I let my white stitch jump off, and I'm done. I'm going to do that one more time. Down here to the very last stitch. And I will do my increase down there. And once we do that increase, we're going to work in garter stitch for five rows, okay? So garter stitch, if you don't remember, is just knitting every row. The whole mitten is done with knitting. Um, so there's no purling. We're going to go in to the stitch, yarn over, come out, extend, swivel around, go into the back leg, yarn over, come out, and off. So we've done increases. If I set this down, you aren't going to be able to really tell much of a difference, especially with this really great scrubby yarn, where those increases are. But they're there. If I were to count, I have 33 stitches. Now I want you to go ahead and knit your five rows. Join me back here, and we're going to add our stitch markers to have the placement for our thumb gusset. I'm going to show you how that's going to work up so that we can plan for that working through the thumb gusset, and then putting all of those stitches for the thumb on a holder. Now that part was pretty easy, wasn't it? Knitting is pretty simple. But now we have to prep for the thumb gusset. So look down here, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. As you look down here, you can see I have my cuff, and then the five, uh, five rows of garter stitch that we just completed. And I've gone ahead once again, and mark the next row, so that way I know where the stitches are. The next row says we're going to knit across 15 stitches, so that's the, the marker I've done here. Then we're going to place a marker on our needle. We're going to do a knit front and back, knit one stitch, knit front and back, and then place a marker on our needle and knit to the end. What we're doing, if you think of your mitten, think of this as the mitten, but I'm laying it down flat, we're creating extra stitches right here to make up for this large area of the thumb. 
So when I bring this in, if I were to lay this down flat, this here is what we're going to be creating between the markers, okay? So every time we come to the instructions where it says to slip a marker, knit front and back, and then work the instructions to the next, you know, knit front and back and then the next marker, you're going to be increasing stitches on the thumb area, and that's what's going to allow you to have a space for your thumb. So we're going to get you started with that, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is knit across our 15 stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Once again, you do not have to mark, pre-mark the stitches like I did, but I did it just so that I can maintain a conversation during the video and get to the correct point. I really enjoy making these little mittens flat so much easier than making them in the round with this yarn. Um, it's very smart of Michelle Wilcox to design them in this way, and I think that you guys will enjoy this as well. And it is super fun, super quick, perfect little gift for um, that special person in your life. So I'm going to remove this marker because that's going to be my 15th stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and knit that. And now it says I'm supposed to place a marker. Now this marker that I'm placing is going to be on the needle. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to close this marker up, and I'm going to place it directly onto my needle. And I'm going to do a knit front and back into the next stitch. So if you remember, I'm going into the stitch, yarn over, pull my loop through, extend up, take my right hand needle, come to the back, leg of that same stitch, and knit through that one. So I have two stitches. So I've done an increase. I'm going to knit one stitch. And I'm going to do another increase. So I'm going to go into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, swivel around, go into the back leg of that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then off. So now the next part of the instructions say I'm going to put a marker. So I'm going to take that marker out because it was just marking my place. And I'm going to put it right there, directly onto the needle. It's not going onto any stitch. It's just resting directly onto the needle. And then I'm going to knit to the end of the row. Once I get to the end of the row, I'm going to turn, and the next row, I'm just going to knit. Now, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to knit the next row with you because I want you to see how you treat those markers when they're resting on your needle. It's really super simple, and it's funny because you'll get people who will stop you, and if you're making something like this or maybe a baby hat and you have little markers hanging off your needles, they might ask you, you know, why are you using those to decorate your stitches? Or don't you know that those are a choking hazard? And you have to tell them, no, these aren't actually in my knitting. They're resting on my knitting, on my needles, to mark a place in my knitting so I know that there's something that's supposed to happen there. Well, our something that's supposed to happen there is the, uh, we're making those increases for our thumb gusset. Now, you won't work your increase every row. You will do a plain knit row between your increase rows. So that will give you a little bit of a reprieve of doing those knit front and backs. So I'm going to get here to the end. And it's going to be easy because I'm going to get to my marker and you're going to see how simple this is, okay? Here we go. Almost there. Almost there, I promise. <laughs> and I'm to my marker, and this is how easy it is. You ready? I slip my marker over. That's it. It's on my right hand needle and I carry on. So I go ahead and I knit the next stitch all the way over to the next marker. Right here. And then I slip my marker again. Now if you don't have these really nifty markers that I'm using, you can use just regular old worsted weight yarn, maybe looped over and um, you know, put a knot in it and make it a loop yourself and just use those on your needles. I've seen that done before. Uh, anything will, will work. You just wanna do something that marks a place in your knitting because it's gonna be important that you know where that place is so you know where to work your increases, okay? Don't rely on your math or anything like that because how many of us come home from work at, after a long day and just want to pick up our knitting and just work? Well, if we're going to do something like this, we do have to do increases. So it just makes it easier for us not to have to think too much if those markers are just resting there for us. So we've done our knit row, okay? So in the next row would be row three, and we would work our increase. So we would knit across to our first marker, Slip our marker, work an increase in our first stitch, and then we would knit to the last stitch before the marker and do another increase, slip our marker, and work to the end. And you're going to repeat rows two and three, so it would be a row of knit and a row of increases um, three times. So you're going to get a total of 
43 stitches across here and you'll have 13 stitches between your markers. Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to knit to the marker and slip it and go all the way across for row 10. And row 11, you'll knit 15. You're going to place all of the stitches that are between your marker onto a holder. And then you're going to go ahead and knit your 15. And what's going to happen is those 13 stitches are going to be placed on a holder and we're going to go back to just working with our stitches out here. Okay? Go ahead and work through all of your thumb gusset stitches and join me back here and I'll show you how to put all of those stitches onto a holder and moving on to the next step of the hands, okay? You're done with the lower hand and you're done with the thumb gusset. And so it's time to work the thumb. Look down here, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. You can see down here, you can see I already have all of my stitches increased and I have my 13 stitches between my markers. Now in the last section, I said that we were going to put these stitches on a holder. Totally wrong. <laughs> That's typically how I would make a mitten, but it makes sense that Michelle Wilcox will actually have us finish these stitches off. We're going to work our thumb stitches and then go back and work these stitches separately. Um, it makes sense because it will be easier than trying to find our stitches when these are uh, on a holder to work into them. So it makes sense that we're going to do it this way. We are going to knit across these 15 stitches and place them on a holder. And for a holder, I'm just using a, a length of Red Heart Super Saver yarn and I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it on my darning needle and I'm just going to thread it through those stitches once we have them knit. So once they're knit, we'll go ahead and put those on a holder and then we will knit across these and then we'll put these on a holder. And then we will work just back and forth on these stitches, on the thumb stitches, okay? So that's what we're going to do first. Let's go ahead and jump in. So I'm going to take my yarn, it's still attached, everything's still attached, and I'm going to knit across these 15 stitches. So I'm going to knit to my marker. I've been sitting here singing Christmas songs all morning. It's kind of fun. And the nice fire behind me makes it nice and soothing <laughs> as I'm in this beautiful little holiday studio. All right. Here we are to the end. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove that marker just so it doesn't fall off. And I'm going to slip those just a little bit deeper into my left hand needle so they don't fall off. Now, you saw me thread this needle earlier, and all I'm going to do is on the right hand needle, I'm just going to take this darning needle and go into each stitch just like so. And by doing that, I'll be able to pull through this length of yarn through all of these live stitches. Now, it's really important that you choose a length of yarn you're going to use for your holder that's not going to tangle up with your stitches. So you don't want to use another length of yarn of the scrubby yarn, say, because I think that that would just be a little bit too difficult to work with. So you want to use a nice smooth yarn. As I said, Red Heart Super Saver or with Love or even the soft yarn would be really a great yarn choice uh, to do this. And I'm just threading all of the stitches through and I'm making sure I get through all of them. Just like that, I can remove my needle, pull this through. Now all of those stitches are just resting on my yarn, okay? If you have a specific yarn holder or stitch holder, you can use that if you want, but I'm choosing to use just a length of yarn because that's what I have lying around. Now I can carry on. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to knit across these 13 stitches that are my thumb, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I can hang on to those on there, so I won't, don't let those go anywhere. I'm going to remove my marker. Now I'm going to place these stitches on a holder without knitting them anymore, okay? The reason you're not going to knit them anymore is you want your yarn still attached to those thumb stitches, okay? So right now it's still attached to the thumb. So we're just going to place these on a holder now, and I'm slipping them just like this, just like I did before. All right, all the way on, make sure I have all of them. 
Once they're all on here, I can go back and work just back and forth on those 13 stitches that I have still on my needle. You can see right there, these are all on holders, and I can work back and forth on here. Go ahead and work back and forth on these 13 stitches for 10 rows. And then we're going to work some decreases and finish that off, and we'll put these stitches back on needles and work on those, okay? You've completed your 10 rows of your thumb, and it's time to do the final shaping for the top of the thumb. If you look down here, you can see yours should look something like this, where your stitches are on holders, and you have a length of fiber or fabric going on like this, and that's where your thumb is going to go, okay? So now we need to bring these stitches in so that way you can close in the top of the thumb. To do that, we're going to work knit two togethers three times. So let's go ahead and do that. And so just to knit two together, just so you guys can know, we're going to take this stitch and this stitch and knit them together. So I'm going to take my right-hand needle, go into the second stitch, and carry on through the first stitch. So I'm through both of those stitches, yarn over, and pull that yarn over through both of those stitches. And off. So I have two stitches that are now down to one. I'm going to do that three times. So that was one, two, three. Now I'm going to knit one stitch, and I'm going to knit two together three more times. One, two, three. I'm left with seven stitches on my needle. Let's make sure I have all seven stitches right there on my needle. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to cut my yarn, and I'm going to leave a long tail because I'm going to use this tail to sew the thumb together right now, okay? So I've cut my yarn and I'm going to thread this tail onto my tapestry needle. And I do like to use the steel bent tip tapestry needles, you guys. Trust me on this, especially with this yarn. It's really important that you choose this, this type of needle. And I know you can purchase it at redheart.com. I'm going to take my, my cut yarn, and I'm going to weave it through all seven of these stitches. So I'm just going to go through all of them, just sort of like we did when we Put all of those stitches on a holder. I'm going through all of them. I'm going to pull this through, okay? Once I pull this through, I'm going to pull it really nice and tight. See how nice and snug that is? Now, this is what I'm going to do. Making sure that the cuff, the inside of the cuff where my color changes are, are on the inside, I'm going to fold this like so, and I'm going to sew my thumb together. So I'm just going to do a whip stitch. So I'm just going to pick up a loop over here and a loop over there, and I'm just going to sew it just like this. Okay? It's going to look perfect. No problem whatsoever. It doesn't have to be absolutely precise. I'm just sewing it all the way to the end. Okay? I can finish this off just by going back and forth. Maybe I create a little bit of a knot right there if I want to. Um, I don't think I need one. I think I'm good there. But I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to leave this tail long right now in case I have to go back and do some more seaming later with the thumb. So I'm just going to leave it long, and I'm just going to pop it right down there. So now my thumb is complete. Do you see that? No problem. My thumb is complete. So it's time to move on and do the upper hand. So it's time to move on and do the upper hand. We're nearing the finish. Let's go ahead and see what we need to do next. If you look down here, I have the work facing me with the right side. And we, if you remember, we've already knit across these stitches. And then we put these stitches on a holder. So we're going to place these stitches on our right-hand needle, and we're going to place these stitches on our left-hand needle. Once we do that, we're going to pick up and knit three stitches right here from our, our thumb join, okay, where it's all sewn together to create just an extra space there. It's going to make up for the initial three stitches that we put between the markers down here, okay? So we're going to get back to our 33 stitches. And so we're going to pick up three stitches and then knit across here. And then we're going to be working back and forth across our 33 stitches. Let me show you how to put these stitches back on your needle. Using the yarn here as my guide, all I need to do is if I take my right-hand needle 
and I follow it, follow my yarn, and I just pick up the stitches just like this, okay? If you notice, I started from the outside and I'm going in because I want the last stitch that I'm gonna be picking up to be the first stitch on my needle. That places the stitches in the correct place on my needle, correct? Once I get all these on here, before I pull out my yarn, I'm gonna make sure I have 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now all 15 stitches are on there, I can take my yarn and I can throw that away. So just my waist yarn. So now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Remember, I'm not gonna pick up this way because I want the first stitch to be at the end of my needle and I want this to be my first stitch because I'm gonna pick up stitches down here at my thumb. So I'm gonna start over here and following along my yarn, the, the waist yarn, I should say, I'm gonna make sure that I'm not going through the actual waist yarn, but I'm picking up all of my stitches all the way down my row. And I'm just putting them back on my needle just like I did before, just so that they're ready to be worked again. The waist yarn was literally just holding the stitches live there for us so that they didn't fall away and uh, go bye-bye on us, right? This last one's giving me a little bit of a trouble here. I think there's one more, I might be, that might be it, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I've got 15, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna remove my waist yarn. So I'm back to where I started, right? But I need to have those three stitches right here to make up for the three stitches that we started with down here at the bottom of the gusset. So to do that, I'm going to pick up three stitches right there with my left hand needle. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm going back to this yarn and we're going to pick up three stitches. So I'm just going to pick up, just gonna grab a, a loop like that. I'm gonna treat, let's see here. I'm trying to make it so it's not so bulky. Pick up that loop, pick up that loop, and then let's pick up that loop right there. All right, now I'm going to knit those stitches that I just picked up. Let's put that one on my needle so that it's not gonna be a big gaping hole. All right, so I'm gonna knit this one through the back leg just so that I don't get a hole. Maybe it's just not the right stitch to pick up. This is where it gets fiddly. So you can pick up anything you want. All right, there we are. So this is good. And I'm just gonna start knitting. So there's one, two, three. So there's my pick up and knit my three stitches. And now, whoa, making sure I don't lose my stitches, I'm going to carry on down my 15 that I had on my holder. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. <laughs> Once I have all of these stitches complete, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to carry on working in garter stitch until my hand measures approximately six inches. Now, if you're making this for somebody who has a smaller hand, you can adjust that. You don't have to make it a full six inches. You can actually put your thumb already in the thumb uh, space that you've created, and you can make it up to the point, probably think about like where your pinky is, and then you can begin doing shaping uh, for the top of the mitten at that point. So go ahead and work the, the measurement you're gonna work into, whether it's six inches or whatever you want to make it, and we're gonna do the shaping at the top, okay? Okay, so you have your upper hand complete. It's time to do the shaping for the top part of the mitten, and then we're gonna seam it up and then add the hanging loop. Look down here and I'm gonna show you what you need to do. As you look down here, you can see I have mine completed. I did mine a little bit shorter than six inches because again, this is for my mom, and her hands are smaller than mine, so I made sure that it fit her hand. She's actually behind the camera, so it was easy to be able to test it on her. Um, and so I'm going on to the next part of the instructions, which say I need to knit one stitch and then knit two together 11 times. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna knit one stitch, and then I need to knit two together. So I'm gonna take that stitch and that stitch, and I'm gonna knit them together to create one stitch. 
Now, those instructions are in a bracket. So I want to make sure I do that over and over 11 times. So I'm going to knit one and then knit two together. Knit one, knit two together. As I'm going along here, yours should start to look the exact same that mine does. Knit one, knit two together. I'm on my last knit one and knit two together right here. And I'm going to finish this up and then I'm going to turn my work. And the next row just says knit. So I'm going to go ahead and just knit. So I'm down to my 22 stitches because I did all those decreases and my yarn is scooching up on me. So I'm going to make sure it goes away. And I'm just going to knit down to the end of this row. Once I get to the end of this row, I'm going to do another decrease. And it's actually just knit two together all the way across. So we're going to get down to 11 stitches. When we get to the 11 stitches, we're going to cut our yarn, leaving a really long tail, because we're going to use that tail to seam our mitten together. And we will thread our tail through the last 11 stitches, just like we did the seven stitches from the thumb. And then we will sew the side of our mitten together. Once that's complete, we will go ahead and we will cast on um, 16 stitches onto our needle again, and we will work a loop to add on to the bottom of our mitt. So I just finished, knit to the end of the row, and now I've got to do my knit two togethers all the way across. So I'm, there's one, two, so I'm going to knit those two together. Knit two together all the way down. Should be pretty easy, should go pretty quick. And I'm going to be left with 11 stitches. So I go along, I, after I do my knit two togethers, I like, if you've been noticing, I'll pull on my yarn, like I'll pull on the fabric down here, just to let the stitches fall into place. Once they fall into place, I can kind of see, make sure everything's done appropriately, so that's good. Almost to the end. Seems to take a little bit longer when I'm trying to talk and show you, but that's okay. I don't mind. Get to the end of the row here, and then we're going to cut our yarn, and we're going to make sure we leave a long tail once again, because we're going to use our tail to sew the side of our mitten. So I'm going to do my knit two together. There we are. Make sure those are on there so I have them all. Perfect. So yours should look something like that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to cut our tail. Look at that. I'm almost at the end of my, my blue. I'm going to leave a nice long tail so I don't have to worry about it running out. I'm going to grab my tapestry needle once again. It's the bent edge or the bent tip steel tapestry needle. I'm threading it onto my working yarn. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to thread these right through the stitches that are live on my needle. And I'm going to pull it tight like a drawstring. So one, two, three. And I can go ahead and start pulling through now if I want to. All the way through. And then continue on. You want to make sure that you absolutely get through the full stitch. Because if one of these drops, you're going to have a run in your, um, in your mitten. You're going to have a ladder. And so you don't want that. You want to make sure you get them all. This is one of the easiest parts of the whole knitting process. Just slip all these right on through. You set your needle aside. Pull this. This yarn is really durable, so you're not going to hurt it. Pull it real snug, and I'm going to fold it once again. Oh, this reminds me of a smurf. <laughs> and I'm going to just do my whip stitch once more. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is on here pretty good. And I'm just going to line them up. Now here's a little trick. There's this really cool tool that is available through Susan Bates, and they're called knit clips. And they come in packs of 10, and they're really useful to make sure when you're doing a project like this and you want to make sure that things line up, that you use these. If you can see, it's like a, a clip where this post goes through this hole to hold your work into place. So I'm going to put one of those right there where the blue and the white match up just so that they don't get un, uh, out of order or out of place. And maybe I'll put one up here just to hold it in place so that I can make sure that I'm going to make it nice and even. 
I'm going to sew my mitten all the way up down to this point, and then I'm going to go ahead and grab this white yarn, and I'm going to sew this up right here with the white. Go ahead and whip stitch your mitten together. Join me back here, and I'm going to show you how to do the loop. You're almost done. This is the last part of your mitten. We're going to make the hanging loop so that way you can hang this on your uh, tub or your sink. And it's really super simple. We're going to make it and then attach it to the mitten. So look down here. As you look down here, you can see my finished mitten. Yours should look like this also. And it's all seamed up appropriately. And I've tucked in all of my ends. And I just did that. I just whipped it right through all of the inside of the mitten. And I've gone ahead and I've cast on 16 stitches. And all I need to do now is knit these 16 stitches and then bind them off. So let's do that. I'm going to set that aside. And I am choosing to go ahead and use my white yarn so it will match the cuff. But if you wanted to make this look a little bit different and a little bit more unique, you could totally use the color of um, the mitten itself to make the loop. Um, you know, use, make it your own. Uh, speaking of making it your own, let's talk about the mitten itself. You could choose to do stripes for the mitten if you wanted to. Uh, maybe you do blue and white stripes, red and white stripes, or anything like that. If you do two row stripes and just carry the yarn up, you don't have to cut it every time. You can just carry it up the side and create a nice stripe. The biggest thing with that is at the very end, when you go to seam it all up, make sure that your stripes match up and just use one of the... Um, one color and just seam up all the stripes. I just finished all, knitting all 16 and I'm going to bind them off now. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to knit one stitch, knit a second stitch, maybe if I can get that to work here, and then I'm going to have the first stitch with my, the help of my left hand needle jump up and over that first, the, the second stitch. So I had the back one jump the front one and off. So I knit one more stitch to get to two stitches, have the back one jump up and over the front one and off. I'm going to do this all the way down the row, binding off all of these stitches. Once they're all bound off, I'm going to go ahead and cut my tail, and then I'm going to sew this entire piece onto the cuff of the mitten. Just like I did when I uh, seamed up the, the thumb and the mitten, I'm just going to whip it into place uh, right there at the bottom of the cuff. You do want to make sure it's nice and secure, so that way it doesn't fall off, you know, in the middle of use, because that would suck. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's really, it's not so difficult to just sew it in place. It's just like we've been doing um, all the seaming this whole time. Isn't this a great mitten to make, you guys? It's super simple. And with this yarn, it's a great little mitten to have in the tub or the sink or wherever you're going to end up using it. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to cut my tail, I'm going to leave a, a good length of tail just so that I have some working room um, when I'm sewing everything up, pull that tail through. So now I can bring in my mitt, and I'm going to add my loop over here to the outside where my seam was, okay? So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to grab my uh, tapestry needle, grab one of my ends, And then working right here to where my seam was, I'm going to pop that in and pull that up. I'm going to loop this around down here so that way I can go through my loop and I'm going to go through the actual mitten and just use my tail to sew it into place. What's really great is if I come over here, see how it's kind of loose? I can just grab it and tack it in really easily. It doesn't have to be super clean, um, so to speak. You, the yarn hides a lot of sins here. So you can just go back and forth. Just make sure it's in there nice and snug. You'll do the same thing with the other tail so that it's woven in really great. And this is, if you hear this, using this steel tapestry needle will make this process so much easier than if you're using a plastic uh, tapestry needle. So if you do not have a steel tapestry needle, I want to encourage you to go and get one that makes things really easy. And I love the bent tip because it helps to be able to get into the stitches. I'm going to go ahead, I'm flipping it over to the inside just so I can take my tail and I'm going to go right down my seam and I'm just going to weave in my tail. 
Going right down my seam, I went down, and I'm going to go back up just to make sure it's all in place. And I have my finger on the opposite side, making sure my needle doesn't come through the other side and show. So that is how I weave in my tail right there. I do the same with this side, just weave it in. I don't have to use this to tack down the loop because I already went through it pretty, pretty securely. So I'm just going in to weave in my tail. Maybe I'll go up a little bit further this time. And I'll pop it back down this way just to make sure it's nice and secure. Pull this through. Give it a cut. And my mitten, my mom's mitten, is complete. All right, now you have your two mittens. <laughs> Actually, your mitten. I have two mittens. You can go ahead and make several of these for all of your children's teachers. You could personalize this by doing stripes, or if you wanted to do um, some slip stitch, uh, maybe embroidery on it, you could just put the letter of the teacher's name. Whatever it may be, you could really make these your own and really say something special and let your uh, teacher know that you care for her and you appreciate all the hard work that she's doing for you and the kids. Hope you enjoyed today's video and you'll come back for more scrubby videos as well as other knitting and crochet videos right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. You can always hit subscribe and be up to date whenever there's a new video released. Last but not least, please smash that like button like my kids say, which my, has just hit that thumbs up. Let people know that you enjoyed today's video. I'm Marley Bird for Red Heart Bye.